Today I'm gonna tell y'all about the time I met the beautiful Megan Good. Now, anybody that knows me or that's known me for a long time knows that I done been crushing on Megan Good all the way back in the Friday days. Like, we pretty much the same age. She might be a little bit older than me, but my whole childhood, I remember seeing Megan Good on everything from Cousin Skeeter to Friday to Eve's By You to Deliver Us from Eva. So it's basically like we grew up together. And when I made my mind up that I was going to be in the film industry, one way or another, I knew that I was going to meet Megan Megan Good one day and I said if I ever meet her I'm gonna pull Megan and that's gonna be my girl son like I was serious about it I boom so fast forward to 2006 they were in Atlanta shooting a movie called Stump the Yard right so by this time in my fledgling new film career I had already did one film I had did ATL and I made a video all about that how I was an extra on ATL for about eight days I got a chance to meet T.I. I got a chance to meet Lauren London Jackie we uh, Jackie Long Jason Weaver all them boys were super cool it was a great experience if you haven't had a chance to see that video make sure you check it out I'll link it here but um, so by this point, I was kind of like, I wasn't as green as I was in ATL. I had already had that experience on my belt. So I said I was going to go into this new film being super cool and super suave on set. Like, I wasn't going to act like it was my first time, like everybody else was acting. You feel me? <laughs> so the way it worked back then, I was uh, um the, the name of the company that was doing the casting back then for extras. It was called Extras Casting. And the way it works is once you kind of get in with them on one film, they kept you in the database and they'll let you know whenever they got another film opportunity for you. And so that's what happened. I got the email. They were like, yo, they shooting another film in Atlanta. It's called Stomp the Yard. Like, are you in? And I'm like, for sure, sign me up. So when I first came onto the film as an extra, I didn't know everything about it. I really didn't know much about it at all. At that time, Columbus Short, who stars in Stump the Yard, was still pretty new. Um, I knew Neo and Chris Brown was going to be in it, and I think that was like their big marketing push at the time. Like They knew at the time everybody was going to be crazy about them. So I knew about Neo and I knew about um, Chris Brown, but I didn't know who else was going to be in it. I absolutely had no idea that Megan Good was in that movie until like way later, right? So the scene that I was in for Stump the Yard, it was the scene, I was actually in a couple of scenes. I was in a scene um, towards the beginning when Chris Brown and his brother and everybody, they did the dance off and then, you know, Chris Brown got pop, pow. Yeah, I remember that scene. But I was also in another scene in that film. And this scene was the first time that Columbus Short seen all the Greeks come stumping through the yard and he was looking, standing on the side. And I think he tried to like fight his way through the crowd and they end up pushing him away and all that good stuff. I was like right there behind him. I was right up in the camera. I knew I was gonna have good camera time because again, I was experienced at this point. So as an extra, I knew how to position myself right up in the camera and that's what I did and that's why you see me all up in the screen right there <laughs> so that scene right there we shot that scene at um, Morris Brown College which at the time if I'm not mistaken was closed down so it was an abandoned college but it was still a college and so everything was still in place the building was still there it was plenty of room for all the extras and it was a lot of us on set that day probably easily hundreds of extras right so if you've ever been an extra on a set then you know but if not then when you're extra on set there's a lot of hurry up and wait right in other words when we need you you better be like available like right now we shouldn't have to look for you we shouldn't have to find you we shouldn't have to do none of that like when we need you be ready but when we don't need you go ahead and find something to do get lost get out of our way <laughs> that's kind of how the producers treat extras on most sets and again i understand because when you have hundreds of extras there's no way you have time to you know just chop it up with every single one and ask a question so it's kind of like wait over here until we need you and when we don't need you then get out of our face <laughs> so this particular day in question when we were filming that scene I just remember we had to get there super early. Like I think the call time was maybe like 6 a.m. 
it was still like pitch black when we got there and we started like shooting pretty early maybe like around 8 eight thirty. we started like shooting the first scene and there was so many extras and they had to like get the blocking right and basically make sure everybody knew what to do it was a very time consuming thing so by the time we shot the first couple of scenes actually like started rolling the cameras and shot the scenes like it might have been noon or one o'clock already and we had been there for from six o'clock a.m. we knew it was gonna probably be a 12 hour day and that's cool that's just the nature of the game but um when you actually on set putting in work those hours start to like stack up on you after a while right <laughs> and I'm the kind of person like I'm not really introverted per se but I do have a social battery and if I'm being social for a super long time that battery start draining and I need to kind of like break off and be by myself that's just what it is I know some of y'all feel me on that so that's what happened on this particular day right we was out there we was filming it was taking a long time even though it was really fun it was really cool I was talking to a lot of people but I got to the point where it was like I um in between filming in between shooting I'm gonna go and like duck off because I just need to kind of be by myself and regroup and get away from people right so I walked away from like the main courtyard that we were filming at and again this was in between you know shots they weren't like I just walked away in the middle of the scene it was just kind of we had some downtime so I walked away and I kind of found like this back shady area that was kind of like away from all the main action and there were some trailers back there and so I'm like alright cool I'm gonna just go sit back there and um I just kind of ducked off and I started scrolling down my phone and I'm sitting like in between two trailers right so there's a trailer behind me and there's a trailer in front of me and I'm just sitting down on my phone scrolling and the trailer in front of me the door opens and out walks Megan good y'all like she's right there in front of me like if I would have reached out maybe like two arms lengths away she was like right there in front of me and I was like oh my because again like I had the biggest crush on Megan good and so she walked out the door just looking all young and beautiful and skin glowing and melanin popping in the sun it was like a music video y'all it was like she was walking down in slow motion <laughs> walking down the steps to the trailer and so when she walked down the steps she didn't see me at first she didn't even notice me because although I was like close I wasn't right up in her view I was kind of far back and she was in her own world so she walked down the steps and <laughs> Swear to God, this is what she did. She started just kind of like dancing, like in her own little world, nothing crazy, just kind of like moving, you know what I mean? Almost like she was listening to music. I don't think she was listening to music, but she might have had a little tone in her head or something. I don't know. So she just kind of dancing for like a good six seconds, and I'm just like dumbfounded sitting like there, can't get over the fact that Megan Good is right in front of me dancing and I didn't say anything because like I was speechless <laughs> and so finally she kind of like turned around and noticed me and she kind of was like oh she was like oh my bad uh you know just I'm over here dancing or whatever and I was like oh no no you good like you know do your thing do your thing because at this point I'm like oh my god Megan Good is talking to me Oh my and so <laughs> I definitely don't want to sound like too big of a groupie and um you know be all like starstruck and everything but I definitely was enjoying the fact that I was officially kind of sort of conversing with Megan Good after those first couple of lines right so she said my bad um you know <laughs> and I was like nah do your thing do your thing and so then um I took the opening, you know, I walked over a couple of steps, I walked up to her, and I just introduced myself, I said, hi, I'm Jamal, and she was like, hi, I'm Megan, and in my mind, I'm like, of course I know who you are, but the fact that she, you know, was just so cool and humble, that was really cool, right, so we shook hands and everything, and yeah, I gotta keep the conversation going, like, Keep in mind, y'all, at this time, I'm still in high school, so I kind of got a little game. You know, I know how to keep a conversation going because it's high school. You're surrounded by, you know, people all day, so it's easy to keep a conversation going. But I also felt like the pressure was on me not to mess up. So <laughs> I was like, um, you know, I said, I'm Jamal. She said, hi, I'm Megan. And I was like, so how do you like it out here in Atlanta? So 
<laughs> if you seen my last video I did about Lauren London, you might remember that I asked Lauren something similar, like how you like it down here in Atlanta, because she mentioned that she was from Cali, so you know I said, how do you like it down here in Atlanta? Now this line at the time, y'all, was like my go-to line to keep a conversation going, especially on film sets, because by this point I had been on film sets for about 14 or 15 days between ATL and Stomp the Yard. So I'm meeting all these different people. Most of them are extras, a lot of pretty girls on site. So it's just easy to kind of have like a default line to just throw out there to get the conversation going. And since a lot of people weren't from Atlanta, especially at the time because Atlanta was new as far as like being the hub of filmmaking, Atlanta was new. So a lot of people were coming from all over Cali, New York, whatever the case may be. So I asked Megan, I was like, you know, how you like it down here in Atlanta? And she was like, oh, you know, it's cool. Like, it's not my first time down here. I've been here before. You know, I always like it. I love it. And I was like, okay, cool. And we just started chatting, y'all. Like, the conversation just really started going. It started flowing. And it wasn't like, I wasn't being overly flirt flirtatious. I was just being a regular guy, like, just chatting up a girl. But the more I'm talking to her, the more my confidence is building up because she's talking back to me. And so I'm like, I, I'm going to hit her with a couple more lines. And then I'm going I'm to I'm bust my move and I'm going to pull her. And like, she's going to be my girlfriend. Like, that's it. Say less. And so we talking and I'm just about to pull out one of my big boy lines, one of my Matt Daddy lines that's going to take the conversation from friendly casual to like, what's up? You feel me? And I'm telling you, y'all, this was my Matt Daddy line of the century. I was going to drop it on her. She was going to be all wooed and swept off her feet and she was going to be my girlfriend, y'all. That's how it was in my mind. So I'm just about to drop this big bomb Mac Daddy line on her. And she looked at me before I had a chance to say it. And she was like, you wouldn't happen to have a cigarette on you, would you? And I was like, uh, I did this move here. You know what people do when you ask them if they got something and they know they ain't got it, but they, they pack the pockets anyway. I'm like, ah, nah, man, I ain't even got none. I must have left them in the car. <laughs> Keep in mind, I don't smoke cigarettes. I've never smoked cigarettes. It's never been my thing. Black and Miles, maybe, but I never really been into cigarettes. I never been into cigarettes at all, right? So I'm like, ah, I ain't got nothing on me. I must have left them in the car. And she just looked at me and she smiled the most beautiful, brightest smile ever. She said, well, Jamal, it's been a pleasure talking to you. She was like, but I'm going to go find me a cigarette, okay? She was like, I'll talk to you later, or I'll see you around, or something akin to that. And I was just like, Megan, no. And she walked away. I was just thinking like, no, I just wanted to reach out and grab her. And all I could think, all I could think at that moment was, damn it. Like, if I had a cigarette, if I had a cigarette, I probably would have been able to pull Megan good, y'all, because I'm a thousand percent sure if I had a cigarette that I could give her, she was going to smoke that cigarette, stand her butt right there, and we were going to finish talking. But because I didn't have a Pope, she was like, she had to go find one, and she'll holler at me later, and I was just so heartbroken. And it was one of those lessons in life, like, hey, bro, it be like that sometime. But to this day, I keep a pack of cigarettes on me just in case I bump into Megan Good again. Y'all think I'm playing? Yep. No, I'm just playing. Y'all don't do that for real. <laughs> but no, real talk, for like a good month after that, I did keep a pack of cigarettes in the car. Like, I kept them right in the glove compartment in case I ever bumped into Megan Good again and she needed a cigarette I was going to be ready for. Her. But that particular day in April of 2006, it just wasn't in the cards. I had to watch her walk out of my life because I didn't have what she needed and it was all bad but just the experience of being able to meet Megan Good and talk to her and shake her hand and have her say my name it was absolutely amazing man and it's an experience that I will never forget um the rest of the shoot went well like no, no complaints about my time on the um, Stump the Yard set I also got in addition to Megan Good I also got a chance to meet 
Chris Brown. I got a chance to meet Neo. I got a chance to meet Columbus Short. I got a chance to meet all these guys, and it was just a super cool experience. And um, you know, I want to trade it for the world. So, Megan, if you're watching this. It was an absolute pleasure to meet you. Um, one day, our paths will meet again. I'm doing bigger and better things now. You know, back then I was an extra. Now I'm directing films. I'm producing films. I'm out here doing my thing, and I can buy you all the cigarettes you want, Megan. I'm telling you, come holler at you, boy. <laughs> you are a sweetheart. I wish you nothing but continued success and prosperity in your career. Megan, it's been amazing just seeing you continue to grow through these years since that day that we met, all the films you've done, um, just all the happiness and joy that you've brought to people. Please continue doing your thing. I have nothing but love for you. And until we meet again, take care of yourself. So, that is my Hollywood story, y'all, about how I met the amazing, beautiful Megan Good. If you're feeling content like this, make sure you drop a comment, drop a like, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, let me know. And next up, I don't know, y'all want to hear about uh, y'all want to hear about me meeting Chris Brown and Neo on the same set? Maybe I'll do one about meeting Chris Brown and Neo on the set of Stomp the Yard because that boy Chris Brown was a fool. I tell you back then, that was 2006. I think he had only been out for a year and bro was just dancing the whole time on set, the whole time. Even when the cameras wasn't rolling, he was dancing the whole time on set. And he was super cool, he was young, he was super cool. But this ain't a Chris Brown video, this is a Megan Good video, so y'all stay tuned. Maybe I'll do a video about that separate. In the meantime, till we meet again, peace.